90% Mental is brought to you by Guar Cat Strength San Jose's first high energy strength gym and by Ike's Loving Sandwiches championship level sandwiches every single time. Up next, we got Coach Adir from Menlo Atherton High School, football coach. We're going to talk about his upcoming season, his recent success, and his culture. Coach, how are you? Good. We're uh, in the middle of double days, so kids are beat up. Coaches are a little tired, too, but uh, we're excited. The season's finally here, right? I mean, you put work in year-round, and we're here, so we're excited. Beautiful. It's the fun part of the season, right? Double days. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Awesome. Well, Coach, you know, in your short career as head coach, mm -hmm. you've been doing this for four years. In 2016, you won the PAL Bay Championship, the CCS Championship, NorCal Championship. You were the runner up for, for state. Mm -hmm. 2016, you were PAL Bay Coach of the Year. 2016, Mercury News Bay Area Coach of the Year. 2016, California Coach Association NorCal Coach of the Year. PCA Regional and National Double Goal Coach Award. And 2017, Marine Semper Fi Coach of the Year. Man, a lot of success. How do you, when you reflect on your success, What's the main ingredient? Well, I think, first of all, we've been able to build a really amazing community around football. And the first thing I say when people talk about those accolades is that my name goes on it, but it's really more than that, right? In order for us to have success as a community, it takes our parents being very involved uh, in a positive way, um, our kids buying into what we're trying to get them to do, as well as an administration and athletic directors to support all our initiatives and vision for the program, right? right. Um, so we're really fortunate that we've got a lot of amazing people, and of course I can't forget my amazing assistant coaches that take on so much responsibility in, in, in mentoring these men, or young boys into men, right? Yeah. And so, you know, Reflecting on that, I think really about how far we've come and how many people have been a part of that journey and that process. And we always tell all the parents, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. And we're 100% committed to being a part of that village with our community. Awesome. Right? Beautiful. Now, you've definitely changed the culture there. What is it about your culture? Why is it so special? And what do, what do you have to do to get the buy-in from the athletes, from your coaching staff, from the administration, from the community? Yeah, so the first thing that we did when we when we got the head coaching job, and, and you know, I'd had a chance to be an assistant for Sioni, and so I think the process had started there with him. But the first thing we did is we wanted to create a culture of competition. But more than that, it was we're going to care about you more than being a football player, mm. right? We have really talented football players here at MA, right? Everyone knows that you guys can run. And Daniel would have been fine anywhere that he had gone. Right? He's a very talented football player, right? Right. We look at it as how can we push you to be the best person you can be and the best student you can be because we think those traits follow onto the football field. And if we put the focus there and we show the parents and the community that we care about who you are in the community and who you are as a student, then the football part's easy for us, right? And yes, we do want to win on the field. We're competitive and we want to do well there, but we haven't put the core focus on that. We put the core focus on what are we developing in, in these men and young boys and the men. And that's been the core focus of what we've done and the culture has become more than just football. Right? And that's how you get the buy-in, the brotherhood, and these guys spending all that time together, parents spending time together with each other, and, and in a school that understands what we're trying to do and buying into that. Got it, got it. How would you describe your passion for coaching? Yeah, it's interesting, actually. I, I ran into uh, another coach who's in the PIL who was actually a JV coach my very first year. So oh, wow. fresh out of college, I was coaching JV, uh, finishing my last summer class to graduate college. and. Um, you know, I was going to try it for a year and see how I liked it and I just saw the impact that my coaches had on me as, as a young man and what I might give an opportunity or what the opportunity would be for me to be able to give back and do that for other kids, right? And when I first got to MA, it's such a unique demographic mix we have there. I mean, we really have everything at MA. Awesome. And we're kind of a microcosm of every single part of the country or, or the Bay Area, where you, whatever you name it, we have it, right. Right? <laughs> right? And so that's such a unique opportunity for us to really change kids' perspectives and be able to do a lot with more than just football, right? And so for me as a coach, it was a unique opportunity to leverage that. And, you know, I don't know if I would have the interest in being a head coach or honestly coaching if it wasn't in a, an opportunity to be able to shape kids in that way. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we all know having a first team is important to any team, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, my perspective, when we think of the next man up mindset, the second string and third string, they're the most important mm -hmm. string of people, if you will, because you got to get them prepared for the unknown. How do you and your coaching staff 
keep the second stringers, third stringers engaged and motivated for the unknown? Yeah, so we've always taken the mindset that you're only as strong as your weakest link. So we're going to coach a kid that maybe is not most physically talented, right? And maybe is not a guy that's going to be a star in the football field. But first of all, we're also going to give him those opportunities to shine off the field. So maybe that same kid is going to have an opportunity to shine in study hall and be a tutor for the guy who is a starter, who has 26 offers and has an opportunity to go play at the next level, right? Right, right. But also, we want them to make sure that they have the same feel and buy-in, but we're going to coach you the exact same way. Right, and for us, you know, we we're fortunate that we have the numbers this year where we're able to platoon, and so we have you know 54 kids in the program, so we can play an offensive defense with some guys playing both ways. So, really, everyone's getting reps at practice, right? And and we are fortunate to have 13 coaches on our varsity coaching staff. Wow. Um, and so, if you're playing scout defense, scout defense to me is not you're just there to stand. You're getting coached. Right? Our defensive line coach is, is working with you. Right, yeah. Our linebackers coach is working with you. Our defensive coordinator is working with you. I mean, we want our guys on that side of the ball to be playing at a high level because one, it's going to improve the competition at practice, but two, you're going to get better. Right, And we're focused on every single period of practice has to have a purpose and has to improve skill in some way. Got it. Right? Got it. Well, which, this is a, a different question here. This is, for me, it's unique because at the high school level, I don't see a lot of head coach football coaches that are for the most part off campus or have a day job most of them are working on camp campus or they're just their full on full-time head coach you have a day job mm -hmm. and you're the head coach of a high school football team how do you balance the two yeah so first of all I have an amazing CEO and uh, and John Ralston for our company who, who is really flexible and willing to and understands what I'm trying to do yeah. um, for these kids and I've been fortunate in my past companies to, to have that also. Um, the second thing is we're fortunate this fall we're actually going to have guys on campus for the first time. We're going to have three assistant coaches on campus which will be a huge help for us. Um, we made sure that we've included the MA community and so for me even I'll have teachers text me or email me in class while something's going on so we can address that situation quickly yeah. and so the kids kind of know listen everyone's a part of this it's not just the football coaches during football season doing something right Got it. and so that helps us kind of build that atmosphere of everyone's in it together and that we can hold everyone accountable and that there's an expectation that we're going to hold you to. Um, with my current job, I'm, I'm, you know, it's it's something that actually ties into sports with a medical device that's, you know, a wearable device that goes behind the ear that actually tracks oh, wow. um, acceleration of the skull. So it, it 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 correlates to football in terms of head impacts and wow. everything that's going on. So for sure, me being a coach actually is very helpful for the company. <laughs> right. And so in that stand, standpoint, I'm actually really fortunate the current situation I'm in. Got so. it. Got it. When we think about when we're coaching this physical violent game, mm -hmm. outside of the tactics of coaching. How much do you focus on the mental game with these kids? A lot. We actually were really fortunate. This offseason um, was a huge emphasis for us developing the proper mindset for our kids and how to deal with adversity and, and how to be successful. I think last year, um, part of the reason we struggled is, is we didn't have the appropriate mindset and we weren't able to handle adversity and we didn't know how, how to handle successes and failures. And, Look, I mean, it's a little bit in our charter waters right now, right? We've never had success like that. We never had a linebacker that's being as highly recruited as Daniel is. And so for us, right. you know, there's a really unique saying of people write a lot of books on how to be successful. They don't write books on how to stay successful, right? And I think last year was a really good learning lesson Huge. for our kids. And so I think we were actually, because of our struggles last year, in a better position for long-term success. So our off-season, um, you know, I had a lot of time to spend, two coaches in particular that really influenced me, and I got a chance to spend time with them one-on-one, -on -one was uh, Chris Peterson at University of Washington and mm -hmm. Matt Campbell at Iowa State, two wow. guys that are just um, really have developed an amazing all-around athletic program for their kids in terms of developing mindset, making sure they're successful students. And we've built our own what's called Built for Life program based off of what the University of Washington does. Oh, wow. We have this concept that we tell our kids and we call it the mountain of averages and it's basically a bell curve of the human population and there's this upper 10% of people that are elite in anything they do, right? And so our goal is can we live our life and everything that we're doing in that 10%, right? Wow. And that's really hard when you think about right, it. But sure. the whole Built for Life program, we teach, we teach it as a class all around mindset training for how are you going to live your life and be in that 10%. Beautiful. I love it. It's uh, music to my ears, considering my, my profession. Mm -hmm. as, as a coach, what motivates you? You know, I think for a lot of coaches, it's the same. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm any different in that. I think a lot of coaches understand what football meant to them and their development as a person and, and how much coaches influence them. I mean, outside of your parents, you know, growing up, if you're an athlete, your coaches are probably the next closest major influence in your life. And 
I look at a lot of our kids and we have such a unique demographic, makes it such a unique opportunity for them to be able to learn from each other, but for us to have huge impact um, on their lives. And so for me, my motivation is, you know, how can we use football to make you a better person and put you on a path to success later in life, right? Uh, and for me, you know, we, yes, we want to win, right? right? Okay, I mean, there is that aspect to it and we're competitive and we want to do those things, but the real wins for us are when, you know, guys come back five years from now and guys that, you know, when I was an assistant coach in MA come back to MA and I get to see them and they're talking about they're getting engaged and they have this job and they live in this city now and, right. and those are the things that are really, you know, the wins for coaches and I'm no different than most high school coaches. I think most guys will tell you the same thing and that's, Absolutely. you know, that's, that's why we do it. Awesome. Beautiful. We talk about routines for athletes, how they get prepared for a game. As a coach, how do you get prepared mentally for your games? So I think a lot of it for us as coaches is mentally making sure we're as prepared as possible, right? And I'm almost a little bit too detail oriented sometimes, I think. You know, the kids laugh at me and you know, Daniel was laughing at me on the way over here about how much huddle I watch and all the playlists and cut-ups I make and our defensive <laughs> staff and everyone does. But, um, you know, we're so process oriented and we're so detail driven that we want to make sure that when the game comes, there's nothing that can surprise us. And so having a, a consistent routine and making sure that the kids understand how to handle every situation and the coaches understand how to handle every situation yeah, yeah. and everyone's on the same page with here's exactly what we're going to be doing in this situation or, and, and being able to also be ready for the unknown, right? Yeah. Um, was the Mike Tyson saying, you know, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? So making sure that we understand how to react when we've been punched in the face, because that's what happens in a game, right? I mean, sure. things are up and down. And so for us, that's that's the way that we approach it. We try to be as detail-oriented as possible going into the game, so nothing surprises us. Awesome. I love it. Focus on process, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for, for sharing your your journey and getting ready for, for this year. It's, it means a lot to us to have you on the show, and we wish you all the luck. And we're going to give you a gift certificate to Ike's. Oof. There I'll you come go. in handy in double there, days. There you go. So, all right. Good luck. I appreciate it. Thank all you. Right, you bet. Take care.